during the resting state, there is no movement of ions into or out of the cardiac cell, and the inside of the cell is negative compared to the outside, approximately negative 90 millivolts. In order for contraction to occur, electrical current needs to be produced. Remember, electrical current is produced when there is a movement of ions. So, with the influx of positive ions into the cell, an electrical current is produced. This is called depolarization. If the depolarization were to start on the left, it will move toward the right, where the positive electrode is located. When the wave of depolarization is moving toward the positive electrode, by convention, a positive upward deflection is displayed on the ECG. If the depolarization were to start on the right, it will move toward the left, away from the positive electrode. When the wave of depolarization is moving away from the positive electrode, by convention, a negative downward deflection is displayed on the ECG. If there is no ions entering or leaving the cell, then there is no depolarization, and thus no deflection on the ECG wave, and the line is flat or isoelectric. In summary, the heart generates electrical currents by allowing the flow of ions into and out of the cells. The ECG waves are formed when there is a movement of ions between the inside and the outside of the cells. This movement of ions creates a separation of charges, also known as the potential difference, between the inside and the outside of the cardiac cells. These potential differences are measured using electrodes attached to the surface of the body. When the ECG is flat, this indicates no electrical potential is occurring. Let's apply what we just learned. The SA node is located at the junction of the superior vena cava and the right atrium. Under normal conditions, the SA node depolarizes faster than any other cardiac cells and thus sets the heart rate. Because of its location, the spread of the electrical depolarization is downward and to the left until it reaches the AV node. Because the depolarization starts on the left, it will move toward the right in the direction of the positive electrode and thus produce a positive upward deflection on the ECG. What we have just done is described lead one with the positive electrode in the left arm and the negative electrode in the right arm. This is why the P wave has a positive upward deflection in lead one. The atria are thin walled with a small muscular mass and so a small electrical current is produced and the end result is a small P wave in relation to the other ECG waves. Let's examine lead AVF. It records vertically downward with the positive end near the foot and the negative end near the left arm. Because of the direction of the atrial electrical vector, the P wave also has an upward deflection. Once the wave of depolarization reaches the AV node, there is a delay, which is depicted as the PR interval on the ECG tracing. Notice that the PR interval is flat, or isoelectric, and thus no electrical current is produced. During this time, the depolarization spreads from the AV node down the common bundle of His and the bundle branches. All of these structures are very small and are generally not detected by the ECG. It simply looks like a flat isoelectric PR interval. Once the electrical depolarization has moved through the AV node, the His bundles, and the early portions of the bundle branches, the interventricular septum begins to depolarize from right to left and slightly downward. This corresponds with a small negatively deflected Q wave in lead 1 because it is going away from the positive electrode and slightly positive deflection in AVF depicted as an R wave because it is going toward the positive electrode. As the impulse continues along the conduction system, the apex starts to depolarize. Notice the direction of the vector now. It has a positive deflection in lead 1 and AVF, which results in a large positive upward deflection the R wave. Because the ventricular muscle mass is larger, it is capable of producing a larger current and thus a larger wave. Because the left ventricle is normally about 10 millimeters thick compared to the right which is about 3 millimeters, the bulk of the electrical activity at this point will be produced by the left ventricle and thus the majority of the electrical vectors are directed down and to the left. Because the muscle mass is so substantial, a large positive and upwardly deflected R wave is produced in lead 1 and AVF. Late ventricular depolarization causes the vector to point toward the positive of lead 1, 
to complete the formation of the R wave and away from AVF, where it is responsible for producing the negatively deflected S wave. When you connect the ECG leads, you must realize that you are connecting a positive end and a negative end. Putting together the three limb leads produces an electrical triangle called Eindhoven's triangle. The purpose of Eindhoven's triangle is to determine the electrical axis of the heart and assist in what the ECG wave deflections should look like. An easier picture I like to use looks like this. Draw four quadrants through the heart. The horizontal line represents lead one, and the vertical line represents AVF. Notice the direction of the arrows, indicating the positive end. Next, draw the top leads, which are AVR and AVL. And lastly, the bottom leads, which are leads two and leads three. Also pay particular attention to the angles produced by the electrical vectors, as they will become important when determining the axis angle of the heart. In summary, the cardiac electrical activity flows from the SA node to the AV node, down the bundle branches to the apex, and then along the free wall of the ventricles. By knowing the direction and polarity of the leads, one can determine a normal ECG tracing from one that is abnormal.